Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. I always say that in heaven. In heaven. And last week I gave you the dream about heaven. And Jesus is coming back. For you to enter heaven, you must be born again. For you to enter heaven, Jesus must find you walking in the way of righteousness. Last week during our Wednesday prayers, and I want to encourage you, please come. Some of you came and it was good. So if you need some, just come and sit in the presence of the Lord on Wednesday, 5.30 after work. You are tired of the day's work. Come to the church on Wednesday, main church. So one person, one, one person was telling me, you know what, Rev? Mimi ni mutu una party on weekend. Anajua kuna wengine mmekaa hapa na weekend hata mkikaa hivi. Bali mlikuwa jana mnajua tu wenyewe na umekaa hapa hivi. You know yourselves. You know yourselves. Balcony, you know yourselves. Then you ulikuwa jana. Hmm. Wacha tusianze. In case God will just release the picture of what people were doing yesterday night. Mtoto wangu majamaa wako tu pale hivi tu. You know, you know, you know, you know. So this one was telling me, this member was telling, you know what Rev? A little bit of last year, what I used to do was I used to party and then on Wednesday she comes and sits at the, in the prayers and she said that thing was really, really hurting her very much. That over the week, over the weekend, she goes into the world. But on Wednesday, she comes and sits under the feet of God. Thinking of what she has been doing, that thing convicted. And this year she said, I am living my old life back. Praise the Lord. I am living my old life back. And now I am following Jesus in totality. Tell your neighbor, offer your life to Jesus completely. Yes, he doesn't require a part of you. Our Jesus is not a Jesus of only Sunday. He is the Jesus of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and again on Monday. He is the Jesus at your party. Hello? He will never change. It's only you who will change. He is the Jesus at your place of work. If you are a boss or you are working, what do you think about that boss of yours? Aha. Uh -huh. Represent Jesus in every day of your life. And part of us talking today about the values of the kingdom of God. So if you are writing, start removing your pens, your Bibles, because we want to refer to the word of God. And let us first open Matthew chapter 13. If you have your Bible kindly. And also if the projection can project for us. So that we read together. And I challenge all of us to come with their Bibles today. I don't know how many have. So raise up your Bible. Hard one, not pen. Say this is my Bible. Balcony, I'm not seeing Bibles. Raise it up please. Say this is my Bible. I will do what it says I do. And I will not do what it says don't do. So help me God. So I want to encourage you, please, be coming to the church with your Bibles. I know some of us, God has blessed us with work. And when you go to your office, I know even tomorrow you have already said your things. For those who go with the laptops, your laptop is ready. Hello? Find somebody has taken your laptop, your brother or your sister without your permission. Aha. Uh -huh. Some of you, you have maybe your nice files. As in your, your office things are ready. I want to challenge you now. When you come to church, please, also make it the same way you make it for your offices in the daily routine. 
If you have your nice file, you're a business person. I know your files are well kept. Profit and loss what? Account. You observe them very well. I want to challenge you to do the same with the word of God. It's eternal. It's the only place where you'll find encouragement inside. So, let us go together to Matthew chapter 13, 44. The projection is not yet there. 44 to 46. This is what the Bible says. If you are in your, with your Bible, you can go together. The kingdom of God is like treasures hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then he went in his joy, sold all he had. So if you can, oh, it is there. Sold all he had and bought that field. Underline if it's your Bible. Sold all he had. And did what? Bought that field. The next verse 45, continuing now. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a what? A merchant looking for what? Fine pearls. Just pause it there. And I was defining pearls in the other service. And it's a hard round object which is shiny and usually creamy white in color. Pearls grow inside the shell of an oyster. I don't know why that English. Oh, you say it's called what? Oyster. Oyster. Orchestra. That one. That one. It grows there in oyster. So it is. It's something that is used to make jewelry, and not just jewelry, but expensive jewelry. Pearl. It's a treasure. So the other one, we will discover what happened. And types of pearls. I also went to Google and found that there are types of pearls. And there are real things I even saw today. We have the South Sea pearls. They are considered the most valuable. They also largest in the variety of, in the market today. They can range from $1,000. That is how many Kenyan shillings? Mathematics? Eh? A hundred thousand to one hundred thousand dollars. That is how much? Ten? Ten million. That one. Pearl. That thing is expensive today. You, we also have the Tahitian pearl, which is five hundred dollars or twenty-five thousand US dollars. You can do your mathematics. Again, we have the Akoya. This one looked like they come from Western. Akoya! Hey, they are $300 to around $10,000. And then we have the freshwater pearls. This one come from Nyanza. $50 to $2,000. I'm not saying that in Nyanza we have cheap things. No, they have expensive things in Nyanza. Go there and you'll discover that. Pearls! So this merchant, looking for a fine pile, now continue, projection, continue, looking for a fine pile. What happens after he, he, I don't know whether, after he found this fine pile? When he found one of great value, either 100,000, 50,000, 25,000, he went away, sold everything he had, and bought what? It. He found it sold the other things and came and buy this. The other guy who was finding the um, he, he was finding a treasure hidden, he discovered this other one found. So get these two words. One discovers unexpectedly. In fact, if you read it, it says when a man found it he discovered it. And this other person, we are told that this man was searching. So, some of us, we will discover Jesus Christ. Some of us who are in Christ will continue to dig deep into the word of God. Because there is value 
in the kingdom of God. Tell your neighbor there is value in the kingdom of God. Tell him or her there is great value. Say that one in your mother tongue. Tell to your neighbor. There is great value. Okay, say in English. There is great value in the kingdom of God. So what are these values that we are talking about? When we read the stories of these two people. So if you are writing now, we go to the points. We only have five of them and we will be done. Number one, the values of the kingdom of God. Number one, it is worth more to what money can buy. It's worth more what money can buy. How many have money in their accounts? Put your hands up. I will not tell you to remove it. You now. Put your hands up. Maybe I want to ask God to double it. Uh-huh. How many have money in their accounts? Put, put your hands up. Balcony, amuna pesa jameni. Put it down. How many have enough money in their accounts? Put your hands up. You are now broke. <laughs> Will people ever have enough money? No. That is a fact. Those who have a million want another million. Those who have a billion want another billion. That is why right now there is corruption. There is craft cases. Because money will never be enough. And the kingdom of God is worth to what money can buy. It is more than what money can buy. So the end of what money can buy, double more, that is what the kingdom of God is worth. In other words, with your money, you cannot buy the kingdom of God. It's not enough. That is why in Matthew chapter 19, 27, 28, Peter is saying, he's telling actually Jesus, Jesus, we have left everything just to follow you. What will we gain? These two guys, one of them went and sold everything that he had for the purpose of this one, this, this, uh, this important thing. The other one with the pearl again went and sold everything and came and bought this pearl. The kingdom of God is that precious that only you will find it when you want to look for it. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, keep looking for the kingdom of God. Keep searching for the kingdom of God. So it is worth more to what money can buy. Jesus replied to Peter in Matthew 19, 27, 28. Jesus said, And everyone who has left houses, brothers, sisters, father, mother, wife, children, fields for the sake of my name will receive a hundred falls and will inherit eternal life. The kingdom of God. Yeah, it is there. The kingdom of God. You will inherit. There is an aspect of inheritance of the kingdom of God. So, even while we look for money, let us remember one thing. Money cannot buy everything. Money cannot buy everything. In fact, tell your neighbor that money cannot buy everything. Can money buy love? Hello? Can money buy love? It can process. Hello? It can make that process to happen. Oh, you know, my husband must have a lot of money, you know, you know. And then you marry the person who has a lot of money and is never there. Oh, you are never there, you are never there, you are never there. You wanted money. Now you have the money and he's not there. Money will not buy everything. Can money buy contentment? Hello, church, I'm asking you. Can money buy contentment? No. 
It will never. Can money buy salvation? No. Salvation is only by the blood of Jesus as we'll be looking later. Can money buy wisdom? It can also do it. It can only do what? Facilitate the process of wisdom that you need. It's only you who makes that decision. I want to learn. And then money will help. But it itself, when I give you money, you will not have it. That is why nowadays I don't want to magnify. In fact, I condemn. Oh, what? If you are here and you are spot pesering, ushindo katika jina la Yesu. If you are spot pesering and you are in church here, you are there with your phone every time. You are waiting for goals. For goals. You will not receive it. I want to tell you, you will not receive it. Hello? That's why those people are spot pestering. Every time they receive their money, they said, there's in fact, there's a, a one from, from, who comes from, uh, from Ukamban. Is it Ukamban or where? I received 100,000 every week. Uh, lotto, lotto. I will want to receive more and more and more and more. It is not enough. Hello? It is never enough. And it will not buy everything. Salvation of God is what you need. Number two. So number one, it's worth more what money can buy. Number two, it is worth exchanging the temporal with eternal. It is worth exchanging the temporal with eternal. Philippians chapter 4, verse 3, 1 to 10. And I, requ I want to request the projection to project for us uh, from verse 5. To project for us verse 5 and let us see what Paul is saying. It is worth exchanging the temporal with eternal. Philippians chapter 3. Let us read from verse number 4. If it can be projected, I will be very happy. From verse number 4. Hear what the, the Bible is saying. That though I myself, ah, it is there. Watch out to those dogs. I want from number 4. From verse 4. From verse 4 if you can. Though I myself, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. This is what he's continuing to say, verse 5. Paul is trying to explain who he is. Paul is trying to explain who he is. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, do you know me? <laughs> Ask your neighbor, do you know me? Do you know me? Have you heard those who are married telling their wives, you will know who I am. <laughs> the spirit of who I am normally comes to those people. Or this person is your friend and friend and friend. They're saying for better, for worse, your friend. And then one day from nowhere, she comes and tells you, mm, you will know me. They always stand like this. I don't know this angle is what. There are devils, the demons here. You will know me. And if it's a man, you will. When you see a man doing like this, the next phrase is, you will know me. And this person is your friend, by the way. So you ask yourself, what else does this person want to know about me? So Paul is saying, who he is. Listen from verse 4. Though I myself have reason for such confidence. Confidence about who he is. Confidence about what he was worth. Yes, that is it. And who put no confidence in the flesh? Though I myself have reason for such confidence. There are people who have confidence so much in themselves. Not in God. But listen to what Paul is saying. The next verse. If anyone thinks else, he has reason to put confidence in the flesh. I have more. Yes, I have more. Paul is saying I have more. Continue again. Listen again. This is what he's saying for you to understand who he is. You can imagine when somebody is mad. Lawyers say, Amen. wapi? Hapa. Sindio, it has reached here. This man is very mad. So Paul is saying, I am circumcised on the eighth day. Hey, let us read together. Number one. Hey, louder. Number one. 
He is telling you, you will know me if you think you are confident. Number two is saying what? Of the? Of the people of Israel. Chosen what? Generation. So he's telling you, he's like somebody who comes to tell you, you know what? Uhuru, the cousin, the brother to him, is mine. The name is what? The name which is big is which one? Uhuru. So here he's saying, Israel, you will know me. Continue. And then he's saying what? Of? Not only is he Israel, he's coming down. So if he's a lawyer, he's saying, is in the Muluya, Muisoha, Mushimutu. Hello? He's saying he's a lawyer, then he comes, so that you may know who he is. Of the tribe of Benjamin. By the way, Benjamin was one of the sons of who? Of Jacob. Right? He continues. Ah? Uh, so if it's your tribe, Muluya wa Waluya. <laughs> if it is Luo, you will know that I'm a Luo. Katama tang, 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 tang. Continue again. Hebrew of Hebrews. Continue. He's continuing to say who he is. In regard to the law, Utaniambia nini? I'm seeing Paul amesumama hivi. Ako hivi? Amesumama hivi? Eh eh. As for zeal, as for zeal, before he met Jesus, he was going to do what? To persecute. This was a powerful man. Continue. The church, as for righteousness, he is faultless. Utajua ye ni nani? That is Paul. But when you keep reading down, verse 7, continue, my brother or sister. I'm not seeing you, whoever is there. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider what? Loss. For the sake of who? Of Christ. What is it that you have right now? Who do people know you? Or what do you want people to know you for? Number two, we're saying it is worth exchanging what? Temporary with eternal. Paul did it. You can also do it. Number three, it is worth, it's worth, is hidden in word, prayer, and fellowship. It's worth is hidden in word, prayer, and fellowship. If you're writing, it's worth is hidden in word, prayer, and fellowship. These are very key and important things for us. Your prayer life. Your fellowship life and your way to read the Bible. And right now I've been given the reading plan. It is in your Bible. Please don't leave. Go and start engaging with Joshua. Very interesting book. It's only in reading the Bible that you'll find righteousness, which money cannot buy again. You'll find peace, love, and what? Joy. In the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 14 verse 7 says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, joy. Yeah? Okay. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Let us sing it. Righteousness, peace, Joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's. Say again. Righteousness, joy. Hey. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Sing. Righteousness, joy, and. That's the king. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on. Sing again. Righteousness. Righteousness. Peace. 
joy in the Holy Ghost. Again, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on. I like when they say, there is joy in God's kingdom now. So much joy. There is peace. You know that one is very romantic. This is Valentine. Listen. Mm. Oh, peace. Come on every morning. There is peace. 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 Oh, peace. Come on. It's only where? In the kingdom of God. It's only where? In the kingdom of God. It is worth exchanging temporal with eternal. It is worth is hidden in word, prayer, and fellowship. Where you will find that what we have sung. Number four, it is worth repentance and forgiveness. Repentance and forgiveness. It is worth repentance and forgiveness. Jesus said, John 3.3, 3, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the king, not even entering. You cannot do what? See the kingdom of God unless, unless you are born again. Ask your neighbor, are you really born again? Ask them, are you really born again? You must be born again. Matthew 3, 2. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. We all need to enter heaven. And I always ask, how many want to enter heaven? Put your hands up. Say, Lord Jesus, I don't want to miss heaven. Help me to walk faithfully. And when I see you, I will continue to rejoice. Amen. So it is worth repentance and forgiveness. You must repent. The sins that you have been committing, do not entertain them anymore. You must forgive. You are in church and you do not forgive. The value, one of the greatest value is forgiveness. You are here, you have not forgiven your friend. You have not forgiven your mother. You have not forgiven your father. And unfortunately, some have have died and you have not yet released that will prevent you from entering heaven. You have not forgiven your wife, your husband. And this one is not a leeway for you to continue sinning. No. Repentance and forgiveness. You must forgive. So you are here and you are seated, seated on anger of unforgiveness. I want to pray that today you will release that person to the cross of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The kingdom of God is worth repentance and forgiveness. If there's sin in your life, ask for God to forgive you. Because of the, the value of the kingdom of God is worth you asking for forgiveness. Finally, it is worth sharing and caring. It is worth sharing and caring. Luke chapter 10, 30 to 37 talks about the good Samaritan. How much do you care about your family? How much do you care about your brothers, your sisters that God has blessed you with? How much do you care about the colleagues in your office? There are people when people request you to support them in their weddings, Hello, you wanna click next? They forcefully put you in their WhatsApp groups. 
I know you are here. They forcefully put you in your WhatsApp group called Operation Idea Dennis. You wait when it is night, you left the group. God is seeing you, my brothers. God is seeing you. Sharing and caring. They pass that envelope, not envelope, the, the card for Arambe. Saidia, changa, changa. God has blessed you and you know it. Instead of even putting something small, you pass it over. They say, let us contribute for the gift for this brother or this sister. Or for the medical bill for this brother and sister. It is worth sharing and caring. Tell your neighbor, it is worth sharing and caring. By the way, my, my brother, Reverend Alfred, the mother is unwell. I just wanted to bring it to you. And she's admitted at MP Shah. So if you know that, you can take that phone and just call Rev, how are you? And if God allows, you can just walk and say, I've come to pray with you. I'm saying if you can. But many of us will hear of such news. Nasema kuna kuna prayer team. There is a prayer team which will deal with the issues of, of prayer items. It is worth sharing and caring. Don't pass it over. Sharing and caring. That security guy in your door, in your compound, and I know almost all of you have got security guards in your flats that you live in. Have you ever taken even time to ask him, how are you? Some of us part like, pass there like we are calling bombs. Chwap! How are you? How was your morning? Or they have taken care of you throughout the night, checking on them, how was your night? It is worth sharing and caring. You have a thousand people in your phone book. Did you even take time even to, to do a flood of SMS and just saying to everybody? Instead of that, you say on, on, on Facebook, I am considering deleting people who have never called or called. So I am deleting people. It is worth sharing and caring. You know yourselves, you people. You know yourselves. When you see that phone number coming, from Western home, from your home, you see it's written, Cousin Shima, Shipala. Ah, this is sugar wanted. You know, nowadays Android has made phones. If you just turn it like this, it goes quiet. So you see it, you look at it with Madarao. <laughs> the kingdom of God is worth sharing and caring. Be the Samaritan. Be the Samaritan. Let us stand. Even as we finish. The kingdom of God. We have said these five points. What have we said? Number one is, it's worth what? More to what? Money can buy. Number two, we have said what? It's worth what? Exchanging the temporal with what? The eternal. I'm not saying you leave your jobs. No. You just tell God, I know I'm working, but I don't want this one to take priority. Amen? Do your business. Do your work. But don't focus so much on it. Focus on the kingdom of God. Number three, we have said it's what worth? Hidden in word, prayer, and fellowship. And my challenge to you is to read the word of God and pray every day. Jesus kept on teaching and teaching about this kingdom of God. Number four, we have said it's worth what? Repentance and forgiveness. I have asked each one of us to ask God for forgiveness for the sins you have done and to repent and also to forgive those who have had, have caused pain in your lives. And finally, we have said it's worth what? Sharing and caring. So as we continue to walk in salvation, remember this. Our only treasure and value, we should value it above the treasures of the world. Value your salvation more than the things of this world. 
because our life here on earth is coming to an end. A time is coming when we will thirst not for water but just to hear the word of God. So while it's still there, keep on reading and praying. Look for God while he is still he may be found. So before we pray even for these other items, you are here and you are saying, Jesus, I need you in my heart so that I can enjoy the value of the kingdom of God. Not only that, be assured of the kingdom of God. You want to give your life to Jesus this morning. Just put up your hand. I will pray with you. You said I'm not born again and I want to receive Jesus. Heaven is real. Hell is equally real. You want to give your life to Jesus. I want you to put up your hands. Nothing but the blood of Jesus What can wash my way, my sin You want to give your life to Jesus? Anybody today? The balcony? You want to declare Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Anybody? Anybody tonight, this day? You want to give your life to Jesus? I thank God that you are all born again. I praise God for you. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. We have talked of forgiveness. There is this person you have never forgiven. Today you want to say, Lord, I release it to your cross so that God you may forgive me. Maybe it's your mother, maybe it's your father, your brother, your sister, your workmate. You want to forgive this person. You have never said, Lord, I want to forgive. The kingdom of God is worth repentance and forgiveness. You have this sin, you have struggled with today, you want to say, Lord, the kingdom of God is worth repentance. I want to repent. You want to repent. You want to forgive. I want you to raise up your hand, wherever you are. There's this person you've been carrying in your heart. Today you say, Lord, I want to forgive and release this person. Just raise up your hand. The balcony, anybody? Thank you, my sister. Start walking. Just come down, my sister. I'm watching. Just come. Come down. Come down, please. Come down. Come down. Come down. If you're there, just walk. Walk to the front. You want to forgive and you want to be forgiven. Just walk to the front. You want to forgive and to be forgiven. Just walk to the front today and say, Lord, now that I know the worth of the kingdom, just come to the front. I say, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You want to forgive and to be forgiven. Remember, God knows even the sins you did yesterday or oh, the weekend, God knows it. But you say, Lord, I just want you to forgive me. Thank you for, thank you for coming. You are still there, you know your heart. You know, you know that you need forgiveness. You need forgiveness. You need to forgive somebody. Thank you, my brother. White heart has no other. Oh, nothing but the blood. Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, Lord, I want to sing your praises. Lord, oh, glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Oh, you came from heaven so that your sins may be forgiveness. So that you may receive forgiveness. My sister, my brothers, keep walking to the front. Even as you want to just ask God to help you release this burden from your heart. Oh, from the grave. You came from heaven to earth to show us the way from the earth. 
My brother Nate, kindly come. Oh, Jesus, we thank you that you came. We thank you that you came to this earth and that you went to the cross at Calvary. And Jesus, we see you at Calvary. We see you on the cross. We see the nails in your hands and your feet. We see the blood dripping down. And we know that it is in that blood that we have forgiveness. We know that it is in your blood that we have life. That you say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And Lord, we confess we know not what we have done, but we need that forgiveness. So Jesus, thank you that you came. Thank you for for your forgiveness. And I pray for your forgiveness and your life and your power to fill these, my brothers and sisters. Would they know the power of forgiveness? Would they know the power of the cross? Come, Holy Spirit, come. We ask this for your glory. Amen. Amen. Release those people from your heart. The Lord has forgiven you. We have my sister behind. I will come briefly to just to encourage you. So you'll follow her. Hope you have picked your, your items. God is with you. And even for those who are standing here, may the Lord continue to help you to walk freely. Remember, there is the value of the kingdom of God. So you can follow my sister even after the service. God bless you. So next week, come with a friend. Amen? And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord continually remind you of the values of the kingdom of God. May the Lord cause his face to shine towards you and give you peace. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with each one of you now and forever. May the church say amen. Amen. Let us clap to the Lord. And now share in the words of the grace with the people standing close to you and those who, the couples who will be seeing Audrey kindly do that. So share in the words of the grace. And now may the grace and the love of God share, share, share. Be with us now. Amen. So God bless you and keep you next Sunday we meet. Please bring a friend to show the way from the earth cross from the cross from the cross to the grave grave to the sky Lord I lift your name Oh, you came from heaven to us To show us the way From the eye to the cross Oh, I dare to pray From the cross to the grave From the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high Lord, I lift your name on high